Hello, I'm Robert Zubrin. I'm president of the Mars Society. And I'm here to ask your support for the Mars Arctic 365 mission. The Mars Society is an international organization of people committed to furthering the exploration and settlement of Mars. And the Mars Arctic 365 mission is a key step that we are going to take to make that possible. The Mars Society has built on Devon Island in northern Canada, just 900 miles from the North Pole, a practice Mars station, what's called a Mars Analog Research Station. It's designed to be extremely similar to the kind of a habitat that a human exploration crew would have on Mars on its first mission. And this island, Devon Island, is one of the most Mars-like environments on Earth. It's a polar desert. It has a meteor crater in it 20 kilometers in diameter. And when that impact hit 23 million years ago, it created shock terrain and it created all kinds of geology that is very similar to what is believed to exist on Mars. The temperatures there are similar to Mars. And what we're going to do is we're going to send a crew up there to, for a full year, which is comparable in length to what a human exploration mission would do on Mars, and task them to carry out a sustained program of field exploration in geology, in microbiology, in micropaleontology, exactly the same kind of field research that a human crew on Mars in an environment similar to Mars, and we're going to have them do it in the same way they'd have to do it on Mars. That is, they won't be able to go outside without wearing spacesuits. They're going to have to do all their field work with those impediments. They're going to have to take care of their lab work. They're going to have to engage in a telescience collaboration with our remote science team in the United States. They're going to have to take care of repair of equipment. They're going to have to deal with the chores of daily life. They're going to have to get along with each other. This is a full dress rehearsal for a human Mars mission. Nothing like this has ever been done before. And if we can do this, this will put to rest all these complaints that people are making of the human psyche cannot deal with these conditions, that isolation will stop us, and so forth. No, we're going to show on this mission that far from being the weakest link in the chain, the human psyche is going to be the strongest link in the chain. We have put out a call for volunteers. We have received over 200 applications from people all over the world, from the United States, from Canada, from Britain, Germany, France, Italy, Austria, Czechoslovakia, Poland, the Scandinavian countries, Russia, Turkey, Iran, India, Israel, Egypt, China, Japan, uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Latin American countries, virtually every country that you can make. We have gotten applications from Nepal and Mozambique. People are all over the world have volunteered for this mission. We have down-selected now to 60, and eventually we will down-select to 6, okay, to actually do this mission. But in order to do this mission, it's going to take money. It's not going to take billions of dollars like NASA programs cost, okay, NASA says it wants to practice human Mars missions on the moon and it will cost $50 billion. This won't cost $50 billion. It won't cost $50 million. But it will cost about $1 million to do this mission. And for that, we need your support. So I'm asking you to contribute now. If we can do this mission, this will be world historic. Nothing like this has ever been done before. NASA has sent people out in uh, deserts with spacesuits for an afternoon to pick up rocks. Okay, that can prove you can pick up rocks in a spacesuit. The Russians have had people in a room in Moscow for 500 days. That shows that people can endure in a, you know, air-conditioned, uh, uh, heated room for 500 days. Okay, this is different. This is the real thing. This is a crew being tasked to do the hard job of field exploration, putting up with cold, putting up with hard physical work, putting up with the frustrations of kind of trying to get research done in an environment where things can frequently go wrong, the mechanisms fail, the electronics fail, the weather goes bad, okay? Putting up with danger that comes from being isolated. Isolation is not just being in a room. Isolation is being separated from the worldwide network of support that our global technological civilization affords us. And it is true that on Devon Island, we won't be as isolated as a crew will be on Mars, but they won't just be able to uh, uh, get help whenever they need it. There is, Devon Island is uninhabited. 
There is no town there. There is no civilization there. No one lives there. The closest human settlement is 150 miles away across uh, a, a ice-filled strait in, in Resolute Bay, a small Inuit hamlet of 500 people. Okay? And a twin otter, it, it, which is a small Arctic airplane, is the only way to get from uh, the Resolute Bay to our station, and they're not always available. You might not be able to get one for a day or a week. So the crew will be substantially on their own. And under the stress of that, they will have to do these tasks. It's the first dress rehearsal for Mars. If we can do this, this will be a shot heard around the world. We intend to have significant media coverage of this through filming that's going to be done up there as part of the mission. Pe millions of people, perhaps billions of people around the world will eventually see this mission, will get a real vision of what a real space program can do. Okay, a real vision of what our space program should be doing, what the Russian and European space program should be doing, that we should be opening up new frontiers on new worlds. We intend to use this mission as an icebreaker to get the space program moving again. The American people, the people of the world, deserve space programs that are actually going somewhere. And we're going to show what human beings can do on another world. So please give generously.